Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Versatile Artist in Conversation With. Today I'm extra chuffed about my guest, who is one of the most wonderful colleagues one could wish to work with. He's incredibly talented, experienced, highly professional and a joy to work with because he will always make sure that you feel supported. He's an award-winning actor and producer who has built himself a solid international career in TV, film and theatre. He starred in and co-produced New Order, a science fiction feature film starring the legendary Franco Nero, played Officer Jefferson in Negative Exposure. On the side of Katja Riemann, he was Jeffrey Biko in Goliath 96, and he starred in the incredibly successful Netflix series Shadow and Bone. Everyone I have ever talked with who has had the pleasure to work with him will only sing praises about him, and rightfully so. I've had the pleasure to work with him on multiple projects. Most recently, he was the male lead in my film No Mother. Believe me when I say the film wouldn't be what it is without him. But it will be more interesting for you when you can hear him. So without further ado, please welcome David Wurova. So, so I would say I, as an actor, I, I get more and I learned more from doing uh, than from sitting in the class. And I enjoyed it. It was, you know, to an extent, but my, my the most excitement I got was from doing it. Yeah. That was the most excitement for me. And because like you said, failure um, is is also in, in acting, failure is very important. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't fail, you never really understand uh, what you're trying to bring out. You know what I mean? You never really truly understand. You always have that fear because this is a, this is a doing thing. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's a boxer always says, you know, if you don't train and you don't box, you 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 will have retain your 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 muscle will retain muscle memory, mm -hmm. but it won't be a hundred percent as when you practice constantly and you stay on top of it. It's the mm -hmm. same as acting. Mm -hmm. The more you do, the better you become at it. It's it's pre pretty much not just acting with anything you do. Mm -hmm. If you're a mean person, the more you become mean, you're gonna be good at it. You know, <laughs> you know. If you're a nice person, the more you become nice, you'll be good at it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much practice makes perfect, as they say. Yeah. So I'm, I'm more of a practical person. So I would say most of my education really was is practically based. Right. Um, so I'm ready whenever you're ready. Basically, this was very organic, and I'm, I'm actually throwing it all over now because... Oh. <laughs> no, no, that's all right, because it's so organic, because you actually already answered some questions. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. You see, this happens. is me. This and I love when these things happen when it's just, you know, I mean, that's the point of, you know, and there are two human beings talking with each other and it just happens. Right. To converse, uh, exchange so ideas. Me, let me just definitely say something. I really wanted to say thank you for, <laughs> for doing this because I know that you're busy and I really appreciate I taking the time. Uh and so uh this is something I wanted to say anyway. And uh and we'll just dive into it and leave out the introduction for now. You will hear it afterwards anyway. You know that mm. anyway. <laughs> well, you're most welcome. And thanks for having me. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you very much. So what, I, uh, what I'm interested in, you kind of touched on it a little bit already. But uh, what I'm interested in is always where do people come from? What are their roots? What, why did you want to become an actor? What sparked that? I don't think I wanted to be an actor. I probably was an actor in my past life. And it just kind of rolled into this one because mm -hmm. I wasn't really one of those kids that ran around saying I want to be famous I want to be well known I want no my my thing was I liked storytelling my my grandfathers were really good storytellers so I assisted a lot mm -hmm. you know I was a guy in the back with a mask beating the drum you know making sure that everybody's sitting probably you know I was I was the assistant so that was my thing you know mm -hmm. but I liked it's 
and also I'm curious. I'm a very curious person. I like traveling. I like reading and I love stories, any kind of stories. Mm -hmm. And I love stories. I love reading stories. I love uh, writing stories. I love watching stories. I love listening to stories. I love uh, music stories. I like, because everything is a story. You actually think of it, think about it. Everything is a fucking story. True. Yeah. Every moment is, a, so I love that. So basically, from the age of 10, when I did my first play, I just, it just became normal. It was, it just felt normal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, it just felt normal. And, and I, and I love the journey. Like you, 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 ha, you, you get a bunch of people together, mm -hmm. you write a story mm -hmm. and, and within the story, so you have let's say three or four people writing a story, but these people, they volunteer to agree on, on certain shit. So Igor is nicely put aside. And you have this kind of your baby, you have a baby and you, you all decide to nurture this baby. You all got different, different backgrounds and you get the story and then you embody those characters. And then you get the reaction from the audience, which means the audience is giving you and you're giving back. So this kind of cycle continues, right? It's kind of like a symbiosis of some kind continues back and forth, given and taken. And before you know it, it's just, it's just a conversation you're having with the community that you, um, you didn't really plan on, but it's just happening. You know what I mean? And it's a very yeah. good conversation and you're mm -hmm. exchanging information and ideas and you're sharing. Mm -hmm. So it just becomes more than just performing. It's more like a conversation with, with, uh, with the audience. Mm -hmm. I love that, that, that this energy coming back and forth. And also the, uh, the, the whole process, you know, starting something from an idea germinates this idea and then from there it moves on and it starts growing. And then from growing in you, it sets its roots depending on how much you care for it. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, you are given the fruit. And the fruit, everybody always thinks it's the, the good guy winning or the bad guy. It's just that it's a window into the continuation of, of your story of life, right? So the continuation of a certain person. Mm -hmm. And that for me is, is, is very fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I always say, you know, like on a film set, every single character, doesn't matter whether it's a guy in the back who, you know, you can't see just a shadow walking by, there's a story. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own story. Mm -hmm. The story is not just about, the, you know, the handsome white guy running around killing everybody, making themselves look great. No, no. no. The story is, it's, everybody's story is there, right? Yeah. But there's, everything has a pinpoint, right? Is that? Yeah. That so that's where we we pulled. So when you can pull people to focus on something and still they bring their association with that, that's also cool. So that was for me. It's, it's always been like that. I like the concept of storytelling, and I like also the the conversation that comes up after that. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, your your journey as an actor, but also producer because you're also a producer, has really um, got you all around the world. And shall I just interrupt for a second? Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. My wife, she's uh, she, they're talking downstairs, so I'm just trying to tell them to please uh, tone right. it down a little bit. <laughs> that's all right. So your journey as an actor, but also as a producer, has taken you all around the globe. And, um, you know, you have worked on all continents, if I'm correct. If yes. My, I was correct. And, and in very successful productions, really. And uh, right. he is rather unusual for an actor who is based in Austria so, because I couldn't find a lot of examples to compare you to at all well it's it's mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah I was just yeah do you have a strategy we can learn from <laughs> <laughs> well the strategy is be black be black in Austria and you got the work done. Yeah. all right uh, uh, <laughs> because when I first came here um I remember this because you know I'm I'm a I'm an open guy. When I want to do something, I set it up and make sure I got the right plan. I approach, try to approach the right people. So when I came here in 2000, the first thing I had in mind was, okay, I had already a list of agents mm -hmm. that I wanted to approach. And I, and some of them are still around. I don't know whether some of them are not anymore. So I, I you know, cause I was living in, in, at the time I was in Australia and then the, before Australia I was in the UK. So I had everything planned. I had my resumes, my DVDs with my showreel, everything, my photographs, the whole nine yards, you know, used to carry this with you all the time. When my, I used to have it in my folder, like a big folder that I always used to carry around with me. 
So I approached these people and I uh, wrote, some I wrote, some I went in person and pretty much what I got was, we don't have stories for people like you here. So, you know, you better, mm-hmm. they, they didn't want to have me practically. Oh. As, they didn't want to represent me at all. And I'm not making the shit up. They said it in my face, you know, it was basically like, we don't need people like you here in a way, you know, we don't have, it was very, it was, we don't have stories for people like you. So I don't know what to do with you. So that was pretty fair. I'm thinking, okay, at least it's clear, right? You know where you stand. You can't be mad if somebody's going to tell you straight up, look, I hate you because I just love hating you. It's okay. So move the fuck up. So you, you, you know where you stand, right? So I, I, so I had to think on that. And like I said to my wife, so I had to make a plan. So I came up with a plan that, okay, what, what do I have mm-hmm. that I think I could utilize to make my, to make, myself more productive and as I'm being productive and so earn as I'm being productive as an actor mm-hmm. and an artist. So I looked at certain things that I have. One, I had already had, I traveled the world at the point and I had done some very good productions, theater and film and television. So I put all that together and I put a nice showreel together. Mm-hmm. And then also I realized that, you know, I could speak a little English. So I figured, you know, there gotta be some projects around that do require some form of English, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I looked around in Italy, we're hiring some actors that could speak English. So I went for that. Uh, um, and uh, Vienna's English Theater, were at, uh, I was already working with them. They were great. They gave me a, a, my, one of my first contract. And then I looked at other nations, Poland, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, where they were shooting international projects. Mm-hmm. Prague at the time, and, uh, and then I, I, I looked around, and then Providence, being as it is, I, uh, my current agent, uh, she's it's called Friends Connection, Isabel Munch. Mm-hmm. She she got in touch with me. She's based in Berlin. I've been with her now for a good 15, 16 years. Great lady, um, and she, she said, David, I've seen I saw some of your work, and I would love to work with you. Mm-hmm. There was no. Uh, uh, there was no, oh, you know, you're in a, you know, in a homogenous society. There's nothing going to happen to you. We're all white over here. No, it was none of that. She was simply like, you know, I think you're good. I think you're talented. I think we can work together. Let's mm-hmm. see what we can do. Let's let's do something together. And I said, sure. And that was for me was uh, such a brave person, such a such a yeah. um, strong, beautiful position for somebody to take. For, there was there was no fear there, you know. There was just pretty much, yeah, okay, I like you, and I think there's a lot of work. There's something we can do together, and mm-hmm. I think you you are uh, ready as an actor, and uh, we can do something. Mm-hmm. And the world is it's, it's big, and it's different uh, genders and races. So, mm-hmm. so she um, and then she took me on board, and and then as soon as she took me on board, I think about a couple of weeks later, I got my first big uh, film, mm-hmm. and and we just been rolling back and forth together for, for, for years now. Mm-hmm. And f- simply because it wasn't like she, she, she saw the business, the practical side of business of it. And also she saw the, the she saw something in me, a good a talent and a business partner that she could work with. So that's how we worked out. So I would say wh- how I got to work. So the more I worked international, the more contacts I got, the more people enjoyed working with me, the more jobs I, I got. And the, you know, when you do something like we're talking about, the more practice you put into something, the easier or the easier it seems or the more palatable it becomes. Mm-hmm. So that's how I, 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 I got to work globally. Yeah. It was all purely out of necessity. And I am grateful for what those agents did when I look back because it gave me testicular fortitude to do something about my to put my to put my uh life in my own hands yeah. and look at what I can do and step back mm-hmm. and then sit and say oh they don't like me because I'm 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 a I'm black or I'm from Africa you know they whoever people have got their reason to dislike somebody it's none of my business mm-hmm. so I only step back and I say what is what is beautiful about me that I think I can use to mm-hmm. make my life a little better and also Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, uh, to better my 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 work as an actor and my life in the process. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what it was. So I think 
like I used to say, necessity is master of all inventions. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Are you, um, I mean, I don't see it a lot in your body of work, but um, do you, have you ever felt typecast and, uh, or has that changed? Yeah, yeah, but I, yes, I have, but I, I talk about it, I mention it, and, and I do not, it's not a, an accusation of war or anything. It's just when something starts repeating itself and it's, I start, I mention it. And yeah. And I can tell you that most people that I work with are incredible people. They, they, they listen. Mm -hmm. They go, okay, I, I see, I see what you mean, you know, because it's storytelling, you know, it's not like uh, they, they, they have an, a, a certain agenda that they want to fill and that's it, it's not gonna change and everything is written in stone. No, they, they, they'll sit back and say, okay, I see your point, okay? Or I don't see your point, but maybe we could do something to make it so that we both come to the same conclusion. Yeah. So typecasting, there are, there are opportunities and possibilities for it, mm -hmm. but it's just the way you get around it and yeah. the way you talk about it. And I think talking about things is the most beautiful thing because if you get everything worked out, Yes. Uh, by working out thing doesn't say you get what you want and they get that one. Something gets worked out that everybody will agree on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's also something I've always appreciated working with you is, is you're very honest, very direct in a very kind yeah. way, in a very supportive way. Thank you. And that, that's that I think is also contributing to your reputation that you are wonderful to work with, basically. I Thank mean, you. everybody I've ever talked to really who has worked with you enjoyed it so much and speaks so highly of you. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and vice versa, because yeah. I really truly enjoy what I do. And, yeah. and one thing I do, I admire artists. It doesn't matter of every, it could be, it could be the guy doing the lights or building their old book. It's incredible because what they do is, is guys, man, and ladies, by guys, I'm meaning both. Yeah, all of them, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm talking. I'm too, talking uh, male and female. What they do is they get to the set four hours before anybody else, set it up, mm -hmm. right? And then we get on there like five, six hours after they set up. Mm -hmm. We get into costume, we're pampered, we get our coffee, everybody treats us really beautiful, which is really nice. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful feeling to be appreciated in that sense. And these guys have been sweating for hours, right? And they get all this and everything is perfect. You get in there, you set. So, so you, and you, so you got to get in there with your A game on. You got to be the best because these guys have set it up for you so nicely mm -hmm. that you, you, you got it. It's a win. You got to win, you know, mm -hmm. because everything is ready for you. It's just for mm -hmm. you to walk in and do your thing. Yeah. So I always say everybody involved in producing and making a project either behind or in front or over it or under it is the amazing people. The mm -hmm. amount of commitment they put into it mm -hmm. deserves my full commitment and my respect and my um, uh, uh, genuine, um, heartfelt um, uh, performance. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also my respect towards them. And I got to be genuinely respectful of that because it's not easy. I have done those kind of things. I've worked yeah. behind it. Man, you know, when you're on the set for 16, 17 hours mm -hmm. and you're like, mm -hmm. and people just walk in for an hour, shoot and they go and they get all the glory, which is nice. Yeah. But it goes deeper than it. That's why I always take it as a ball, you know, it's, it's yeah. a complete circle. And everybody that's involved in that product deserve my utmost respect. Yes. So that's why I always try to be respectful with everybody. Mm -hmm. And my father always used to say, you know, you get what you get. Mm -hmm. If you are being an asshole, you're going to get asshole back. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're being, if you are really genuinely respectful, want to listen to people and see what they're doing and actually listen to them and be there, be nice, you mm -hmm. know, you will get that back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an eco chamber, right? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. The way mm -hmm. you scream into the forest. I have no idea if this for phrase is actually <laughs> existing in English and I just literally translate. <laughs> oh, come on, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the way you scream into the forest, it will come back to you. I think Thank that's you. roughly how I 
but I, it makes sense in English, hopefully, as well. <laughs> and I can tell you that I have been in Aust since I've been here, the most people, I would say 99.9% .9 of uh, projects I've done have been phenomenal, amazing. I've worked with amazing people and I've worked with some assholes too, but mm -hmm. they don't count in yeah. comparison to, to, the, to the positive people that I work with. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, and I think you. Sorry. <laughs> keep on. Keep go ahead. Okay. You know, like I was just saying, for example, for example, the movie I did with you, you know, it was amazing. The whole, it, it didn't, it, it was, I felt, it, it felt so good. That's how it should feel when somebody's working, you know, mm -hmm. looking forward to doing something, looking forward to meeting people, looking forward to seeing it, you know, yes. oh, okay. <laughs> you know, this, this kind of, you know, yeah. giddy and, and excited. And that, that was, yeah. that was, that was it. That was fun. Yeah. So was, yeah. I, 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 I only, I only give what I get. Yeah. I really cherish that mm -hmm. experience so much um, doing this film. Mm, that was a lot of fun. And, also, and Nora Hoffman, she's an amazing producer. Yeah. I'm going to do I the next. I'd love to work with her again. <laughs> you doing another movie with her? Mm -hmm. yeah. You are a lucky lady. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I was, I mean, I, um, she agreed last week and I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. She's wonderful. She's fantastic. She's super busy because she is fantastic, of course. Of course. So naturally. I, so I, I feel super blessed that that she agrees and that she thinks that it's worth working with me again. Right. <laughs> because you never I, know. I, yeah. that, you know. I mean, um, you never know how you really come across, or at least that's that's what I feel. But. Um, Anyway, it's not about me. You're a good team. Uh, You're a very good team. So why not? Um, yeah, I, I know that without each and every person, the film is not happening. The project is not happening. And that no. includes the in the hierarchy. I don't see it that way. I, I don't like hierarchies too much. But in the general hierarchy of filmmaking, even the ones who are on the lowest for me, they are equally important as, as anybody because in every it's sense. Not possible. If we in don't have sense. a runner, it things will not happen and and then we can't do them. And that's why they are super important. And I agree with you hundred percent. You have to be respectful with everybody. Completely. And uh, and maybe there's there are people who you know have a chemistry that doesn't work, but still. But still, the respect has got to be there. respectful with each other. Yes, and I think that's that's really uh, yeah, that, uh, that worked really well on No Mother, and I'm very very yeah. happy. And I, and I've been in this game a long time, and I know, and I've met some really powerful actors and directors, <laughs> and the first thing they say is, "Be respectful." Yeah. Respect. Yeah, it makes respect. everything easier. Yeah, much easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how was it? Uh, because you were in Shadows and Bone, this Netflix series that came out quite recently. Shadow and Bone, yeah. Yeah, and they're really exciting. <laughs> um, was it different, you know, the experience, the filming experience, being on a Netflix series to other experiences, or was it comparable? Experience is, by me, experience. Do you mean experience as in the work or experiences in the whole? uh my relationship with the people or are oh, you just saying as in oh, general i think in general. Concept, whatever it is that was probably okay. where you felt like aha that's you know where sense of oh this is different because it's a netflix series it, it would as i had never done a netflix series before so it was a learning curve for me mm -hmm. and it, actually i got that like i got that job pretty much i didn't expect it because i i'd auditioned for it mm -hmm. And I'd forgotten about it. <laughs> I know. And I'd forgotten about it until I got a call and they said, oh, yeah, we actually called and say, are you available? And I said, who's cool? Wow. Uh, for, for what? <laughs> Which project? You know, because usually I got five or six or seven projects that I've auditioned for to just yeah. disappear into ether or somewhere. You know, but then they yeah. come back to me a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. So, and then she, and then I said, uh, but who you, what are you talking about? She said, well, this project we do with Shadow and Bone and think, oh, okay, uh, yeah, I'm available. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time I was doing something at Pinewood Studios. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then she, and then she said, tell you what, I'm gonna send you the details by email and then uh, 
you can get back to me. And we spoke with your agent and she said, we should talk to you. So cool. So she sent me the details mm -hmm. and I looked at it and I, I just loved the idea. And it said there were books and I knew there were books, but I wasn't really, I didn't really look deeply into it. So I went and bought the books that night mm -hmm. and I could put them down. Mm -hmm. And of course, I didn't even know what character, I was expecting this character, this character rolls in, he gets shot in the head, he dies, you know, usually it's like, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And, and he was just one of the guys uh, under Packer Rowland's gang, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, this is interesting. Um, and, you know, at, at my, at some point, I think ego kicks in because you, you, especially I've been in this business a long time and I think I have a lot of experience. Sometimes you feel underutilized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you no, know, like, you know, you know, you can do more. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, okay, this, so I got, when I read it, the books, I loved it. And I, I spoke to the lady and said, yes, I'm definitely available. Mm -hmm. I knew that the first season, the character, there would be just the introduction of the, the, the characters and the locations and stuff like that. So that's why my character in that, in, in that, in the first F season is, is, is so minimum, right? Mm -hmm. Minimal. Did you say minimal? Right? Minimal. Yeah. Because he in the sec in the second season he gets more and more explore, you know, he gets more and more ex uh, explored. That's so many. So when I got on the film set, it was just big. Mm -hmm. I mean big. You got <laughs> it was huge. Uh, but uh Eric uh, I met Eric and then I met uh, uh, my director mm -hmm. and then we met the other actors, uh, Dean who plays mm -hmm. Rollins and Kiss who plays my, my buddy, you know, my the protector as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, and immediately we gelled. Mm -hmm. The first time we met, we just, we got along. It was just immediate, like, just like that. Mm -hmm. And we were like inseparable, you know, we just, we were doing, and our scenes worked so much because we didn't, it was just so easy. It just, it just made sense. Everything we did made sense, you know? Yeah. One and, and the beauty of working on, on that set was the director completely trusted us mm -hmm. completely. And the producer and the creator and of course all the other actors completely trust. And even so it was such a huge uh, project and mm -hmm. production it was actually very small because it was very intimate right. you know you could approach people you could talk to people they were all very approachable so it didn't feel so big mm -hmm. you know but in practical when you see it like when you go to this uh, when you arrive on the film set it's a fucking field of uh, uh campers right mm -hmm. for for artists and makeup and production and whatnot yeah. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of them just yeah. spread out over fields. So it, it's that big in that sense. But when you went to one with the people, it was very intimate. So that was a really beautiful feeling. And also what I loved about that set was th they were very happy with trying new things. Okay. You know, Good. Good. You know um, you could, it, it, was just, it was just a beautiful feeling. It was a, it was a great feeling. And I knew, I knew it. I, it. When I was filming, I knew there was something special about that show. And I said it to my, to, we, we talked about it a lot. And I said, this is, this is going to be a very special project. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's just, everybody's having so much fun. And it's so much fun. And it's right. such, a, such a good feeling to be on it. So for me, it was, it's a big production and it's a big project, but it's a small project in the sense that it's so intimate. The right. intimacy is there and the people are very, you can yeah. approach people. So that made it very uh, beautiful to work on and very easy to work on. Yeah, so I, I, I had a great experience. It was my first experience with Netflix mm -hmm. and definitely one of the best I've had yeah. in a long time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're also really amazing on stage and um, um, you are, by the way, amazing in, in, in the one with Kudra Owens, who's an equal um, amazing- uh, Mountaintop. Mountaintop. Oh, Kudra. Martin Luther Kudra. King, I really, do you know if it's going to be picked up again? By the way- We are, I'm hoping if the gods of arts understanding the goddesses, mm -hmm. um, it'd be nice if the Vienna English Theater picked it up. That'd be really beautiful. Okay. And it'd be really interesting uh, if 
Drachengas uh, comes back and say they want to do a, re a rerun. That would be also good. It, it's, it, you but were, if not, it, w it was a brilliant run. Yeah, and you were absolutely mesmerizing. Both of you were absolutely mesmerizing. Such a fantastic... Kudra Owens is... I love her. <laughs> Kudra Owens is, is the ain't no other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, very she much. She can sing, she can dance, she can act. She's just, she's just amazing. You yeah, know? she's a, she's a, she's a real triple threat. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah. you are also amazing in both. You, know, you can, you know, you're amazing on stage. You're amazing in front of the camera, and it it feels like it's going with such ease. Um, I mean, I'm not going to ask you. What do you prefer? But what is the difference for you between stage acting and screen acting? Do you have a different approach? Do you what do you it's think just, about it? Uh, I look at it as let's say right hand and left hand. Uh huh. Okay. Right or right leg, right left leg. Yeah. You both. You need both. Yes. You know, you could function without the other. You can function okay, but. The, the thing you need both the, the acting is for me film and 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 and, and, and theater mm -hmm. um the difference is in theater i'm having a conversation with the audience right there the audience is answering me back right there in the process the elements are really there i see them i touch i smell them mm -hmm. i hear somebody coughs i hear them cough mm -hmm. If somebody yells something, I hear them yell it. If it's, if it's, I, I feel a reaction. I can feel a wave coming through, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. the, the circulation keeps going. It's there. In film, it's me and the camera, right? And mm -hmm. then my fellow actors and actresses, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also the environment mm -hmm. that you take from. So it's pretty much the same, right? Yeah. But my but my main audience is the camera. So. Mm -hmm. So I have to get that sense of this give and take and this reaction between back and forth. So, you know, it has give and take mm -hmm. that sense. So I'm not, I do not just perform for the camera. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a complete performance, you know? Yeah. The camera performs for me, I perform for the camera. There's that kind of like circulation that, mm -hmm. that vibe. So these, so one is happening um, one is happening organic and, and that in the natural space as it's happening, mm -hmm. right? And it's happening right there. There's no repetition of it. Yeah. One is happening in a controlled environment, right? And in this decision control environment, I can always take another take. Yeah. If I think something's not right, I can always go back. If I think, think I didn't tell the truth in that scene, I can always go back and try to find my truth. So there's that. So but in this, but in, the, 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 in both of them, the goal is to find the truth, to tell that truth. That's the goal, right? Because in this way, I'm performing in theater, tell my truth right now, or they will know it. They will know the audience is very intelligent. If you're lying, they'll fucking see it, and they will tell you, they will let you know. It's the same with the camera. If you're lying, they'll fucking see it, and you know. Okay, you could get around it with the editing and all of that, but you as an actor, you know what you did. Yeah. So you know what you did. So I say, I love both. And I see the necessity of both. And I see the differences of both, but those differences also, uh, I, I see also the similarities of both these uh, forms of art. Yeah. So they feed into each other. They feed into each other. At the end of the day, they feed it. It's, 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 it's a you, human beings, like somebody explained that for any beings to, to, to survive, you have to evolve with the times. Mm -hmm. We were, we told our stories, we shared our disasters through theater. We mm -hmm. announced our um, intentions through theater, like uh, our natural environment was expressed through theater. And then from there, we started thinking, how can we reach older, more people? How can we make this last longer? We decided to record it, right? So we recorded and with that recorded, how can we make it even more interesting? By recording, we decide 3D, we decide this, we think of that. So that kind of like it's the same process, but it's just evolving. That's why we as human beings will, will, con will con uh, the uh, human uh, humanity will continue because we are always looking for tools to make our environment better. True. You understand? Yeah, to, yeah. To make, to, to always progress further. We don't sit back and say, okay, that's it, it's done. That's that's a 
that's the pure sign of extinction right there. Yeah. You know, so, okay, we've done it. Now we're done. We're cool. That's over. That's it. If we do that, we become extinct. But True. what, yeah. yeah. So yeah. how we how we become we become infinite is by doing by creating more and more infinite possibilities within our space to make ourselves our lives better and the lives of everybody around us. Yeah, in that vein, I mean, what I've noticed in all sorts of conversations that we had over the years is you continue learning. So you attend courses, yes. you attend coaches, all continuously. I mean, never stop learning. No. Never stop growing. I mean, no. definitely also my motto, obviously. But <laughs> How do you choose that? I mean, what initiates that spark up? Uh, okay, I'm going to do like the production course that you took or I yeah. this course with this acting coach or camera acting course. How does this happen? I'm an intuitive person in a, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And they are practical. They are actually natural progression of things. As an actor, I wanted to understand how you put people that can tell a good story together. Mm -hmm. So I got into production. I can understand, okay, that's it. And then also camera, I want to understand how the camera works. And then before I want to also understand how editing works. And then on top of that, I also understand how to create my own content. So mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's just a natural progression of things, really. It's like you do something for so long, and you think, what's on the other side of the door, you know? So you want to go behind there and look. So so I choose like right now I'm doing Egyptology and also I'm doing uh, hieroglyphics and learning right. It's crazy. I think my family thinks I'm crazy because I have in mind a project it with to do with antiquity, historical Egyptian antiquity that I, I you know, we, I spoke about it that I've been developing and I'm hoping to develop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of made me more curious about mm -hmm. this this world and. What, what is Egyptology? What is the history of Egypt? And what is it in connection with the world and the African nations around it and also the, the colonies it had? And it's just, you know, just kind of, yeah. it's, it's, it's just a natural progression of things. Mm -hmm. And also for how I choose my, um, um, my acting uh, classes, I love refresher courses because mm -hmm. I like basics, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you have a strong foundation, you can build any fucking thing. So, excuse my friend, the basics, that's the foundation. Yeah. So I love, so I always look at the what's new, how, what expands on the basics and how do I get better at understanding fellow actors when I'm on, on screen? How yeah. do I make it about them and how do I make, you know, make them look good to make myself look good? I, you know, it's, yeah. I'm selfish like that. <laughs> Yeah. No, but that's, that's, I, I, I think that's, I mean, that's really one of the main reasons why it's so great to work with you because yeah, that's very sensible and, um, and, and, and it, it makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. yeah with, you know i mean i i, I think Thank i've you. never had like with no mother when we had this quite tough scenes actually yeah i played together but it was totally easy yeah with you it was so normal to do that and it was completely organic thank you and and yeah I'm, I'm sure this is also one of the big reasons why you are working all the time we're also always busy and get really great projects because um people appreciate that they, yes so if they can't put their finger on it what it is really is mm -hmm. but you 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 experience it with I mean, you don't experience with yourself but we experience this with you and we benefit greatly from that oh thank you i got you a don't. secret for you i benefit from you too <laughs> you know I'm, you know this uh oh man you you're finding out all my tricks <laughs> no, fair kidding. enough absolutely that's, that's no i i it's 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 there is no you there it's hard enough making putting a film together a mm -hmm. film crew and putting it together and then on top of that, having some asshole come up and start making everybody's life miserable that's just mm -hmm. it just doesn't help it's it's not helpful you know so it's so when i get on the film set and if i'm hired to do something i want to make sure that when i it's something that i'm really proud of mm -hmm. you know? really proud of because there's a lot of work has gone into that a lot mm -hmm. of work and a lot of sacrifice has gone into making sure that that people are on that set 
making that picture to realize that there's a lot of long nights, a lot of long debates and arguments, a lot of financial situations that have been brought in to bring them out. It's a lot. So with that in mind, I think the best one person can, the best one can do once you get on set is be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, be 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 fucking nice. Be be respectful. Yeah. Be 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 ready. You mm -hmm. know, be respectful. Be ready. Be be uh, kind. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. Nope. It doesn't cost you a damn thing. So nope. that's it. And I always say, if you don't got nothing to say, shut the fuck up. You know, better. Yeah, like, very much. I mean, you're also a producer, and you've been. For how, when did it start the producing? Really, it started. 2005. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's long. Yeah, because uh, I, I, at that point, I wasn't getting much. I wasn't getting, I wasn't making inroads here at all. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find out how to create my own content. Mm -hmm. So I can, that way I wouldn't one thing I, I, I don't like is I, I know it for me, I, I see, I expect something, but I don't have to accept it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I expect people that have racial, nonsensical, uh, racial superiority complexes, I expect them to act a certain way, but I don't accept it. You understand? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I, I, it's either, so I expected the situation the way it was going, but I wasn't going to accept it. Right. So I figured, okay, how do I change? How do I make myself work more and earn in the process? Mm -hmm. You know, you know. so, so this, this is one of the things that spurred those things. And also, I've always said I wanted to have, later on in life, I want to create content. It was the right time to start. Mm -hmm. So basically, I was at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing, for that particular moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was just a natural pro process. Mm -hmm. Even though it, it, when you look at it, you would think, oh, it came out of a negative situation. No, it didn't come out of negative situation. It came out of, out of me realizing that, okay, I'm ready to start something new. Right, yeah. So that was a very positive thing. So I just kind of stepped forward and tried it. I knew it was, you know, I would fail a few times or, but I would never know unless I tried. Yeah. So I tried it. And then the more I tried it, the, the, the better I became at it and the more I enjoyed it. And the more I enjoyed it, the more I realized that, well, quite a lot of people enjoy working with me and I enjoy working with them too. So why don't I, we get together and do some things together. Yeah. And it just kind of took off for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that gives also a lot of freedom when you have more versatility in what you're doing not just in in the sense of the the roles but in the sense of the jobs that you're doing and, yeah. and, and the understanding of different sides right of uh, whether it's it's a film or a theater because you're producing both i think if, if yeah. That's right yeah and that also helps a lot in the in the relationships between each side so even if you're not the producer or even if you're not the active that ever happens um mm -hmm you under, always understand the other side. You can, can kind of create a link between different sides, which could probably, if they don't have that knowledge, not that experience, uh, collide more. So that right. I think that gives some freedom, also more choice mm -hmm. in life and, and with the projects that, that uh, you can choose, you don't have to take everything, every right. <laughs> thing that maybe right. is, is not worth it, not worth your time. Very true. Yeah, I think variety for me, I love versatility. I got to be versatile. Mm -hmm. as an, I love that. I love the challenge of that. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I enjoy that challenge um, because what I try to do, I try not to judge my characters. You know, I just simply accept it and move on. I'm not the type of guy who goes in and says, yeah, I'm playing a bad guy. No, no, no. no. Or I'm playing a good guy. No, man. It, Playing a guy, you know. Human. <laughs> I'm, playing, I'm playing a human, and they got yeah. their quirks, and we all got our quirks. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we can be a little gnarly sometimes, you know. <laughs> so I say, so so I love that chase of um, 
of exploring a character and also, and, and at the same time, exploring the human beings that I'm working around with. Because usually for me, the influence of my character and this, my character is not really the most important thing. What's important is how he or she, my character reacts to the environment that they live in and what they want and how they get what they want and what they have to do to get what they want. You know, this, this, this for me is always a, an interesting journey. So every single character I've had, they have different approaches to mm -hmm. those three simple uh, rules. You know, who, who are you? What do you want? And how the fuck do you get what you want? Yeah, mm -hmm. things like that. And so, and so it's always interesting. It's always exploring. I know, like let's say, um, uh, what I find interesting, what I find sad, is uh, artists that have no imagination. Mm -hmm. um, let's say somebody doing a. I'll give you an example. There was a project which I had to do, which is a. a a fantasy picture, mm -hmm. dragons, swords, all that shit, you know, really. And it, I could not believe, you could not, I could not get, you could not get this wrong. The casting director practically told me, well, there were no black people in this time. And I'm like, do you realize there were no fucking dragons, right? You realize that, you know, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, you know, but this muff, this gentleman put it in his mind that in his world, certain races don't exist. Understand? Even if it's a fantasy, fictitious world. And I'm thinking, how can you be a storyteller and not have a fantasy, not have a... And it's not just about race. I'm talking about fantasy, about different types of people, short, fat, round, thin, old, rich, poor, you know, kind of... This, how could you be an artist and not have... Mm -hmm. A fantasy that you know takes you to to, to outside of your little box mm -hmm. and this gentleman was actually trying to stop me from getting an acting job simply because in these minds black people don't exist if they don't exist in fantasy they don't exist exist in reality wow you understand so this this is this so you get that but at some point, but when I don't work with those kind of people, I'm actually very happy because it is a nasty, unhealthy um, um, energy to be around. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's an energy I don't want around. Mm -hmm. So when I don't get those kind of jobs, I'm happy. Yeah. Because I'm like, Jesus, how could you be an artist? Mm -hmm. and not have an understanding of how you have. Yeah. The power you have. Your mind can go anywhere, and yet you limit yourself. We see a whole lot of these shows. We see a whole, a whole, we see a whole lot of situations where Black people, either they're going to be immediately, it's the guy, one, they, they, they take the Black guy to fit the, the two, two uh, categories. One, we get the the coder for black, and two, yep. get the coder for homosexual. So you're gonna be a black homosexual actor. It's, it's always like it's it, you know not that I have a problem with homosexuals. I love homosexuals. Yeah. You know, it's not even about that. It's just simply we have this, and on top of that, you get you get to be the first guy to, sh to die. And if you notice, actually, my kids pull me up on and say, "Why is it always black people that die in the movies?" And when they die, they die in the most horrible ways. Why is that? And they were young when they were doing that. They're asking me that. You know, I'm like. And then they were asking me, why are there no stories about Black people in Europe? Were they never Black people yet? And I'm thinking, that's interesting, mm -hmm. you know? But when you look at it, yeah. it seems like for some reason, our amazing artists have kind of forgotten another tenant of our existence for some reason. Yeah. If it's selective amnesia or it's selective, I don't know, but it's just yeah. not there for some yeah. reason. And it's always, and, and if you mention it, you're always dismissed as militant or as angry or, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm thinking, no, it's just, I'm just pointing out things that are, you see them, mm -hmm. you see them, you know, you cannot make a, 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 a movie uh, about a future Europe 
And in this future Europe, there's no other races. It doesn't make no fucking sense. True. You know? True. Yeah. He can't even make a movie about going out into space as a world going into space, but hey, <laughs> it ain't nobody, you know, that the, the whole the world is not even represented. And you're like, wait yeah. a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's just so, Noah forgot a few animals, you know, like you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> only cho chosen, I don't know, giraffes. And we only have giraffes left afterwards. That's not representative of the world at no, all. The world. You know? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. So in so in other words, so I'm very blessed that I work with people that are not don't feel threatened by me, mm -hmm. don't feel threatened by my, my abilities, don't feel threatened by anybody. They actually see it as an addition to their greatness. Huh? So this is really, so I'm really, really blessed in that sense. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in working with people that have closed minds, are not interested in the world. They're only interested in their own little circle, little, little um, uh, world. I mean, it's, it's too stymied for me. Those stories don't go anywhere. They don't go deep. They don't go up. They're just flat. It's like that, it's like that gooey, shit you see on top of water that nasty oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that you know you know it's <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean a nasty yeah. rotten dirty so for that i'm not in so so in 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 a lot of ways i am so happy that there are more people that are thinking out of the box than there are those that do not that yeah stay in their box so for that reason that makes my world as an my uh, work my profession much more interesting. Yeah. Because they're in majority, they're expanding yeah. human mentality, human uh, history, human story, uh, human ability, you know, and yeah. that's for me is like, yeah, putting that's what's exciting. Right as well, putting history right. Because that's right. And, uh, and playing with it and turning it upside down and experimenting yeah. with it. This, yeah. you know, like somebody, I don't know, somebody smarter than me said, you know, Acting is 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 a science. It's an experiment, mm -hmm. right? So you you gotta be you gotta trust that experiment. Mm -hmm. Go with it. Mm -hmm. See where it takes you, right? Then to cut its feet before it even starts walking. Yeah. You know, and you say, oh no, this is how we are. This is how things are gonna be. And this is how we see things. And everybody's gonna be scared of the police because we're gonna make police stories all over the damn playing place. And all we're gonna see is gonna show you that you have to. You know, authority is the most important thing you got. Then even to say, to say, to then teach people to think and say, you know, why am I, why do I have to respect? What is it? How do I understand the law? What is the law? What is it just, what do I understand? How do I fit into society? What do I need to do to be a better member of society? You yeah. know, than to be a scared member of society, to scared into feeling and certain and thinking a certain way. So that's, so in, in every sense, I am very happy in my, in my profession because there's new people, new ideas, people that are always interested mm -hmm. in trying to do things that take us beyond this simple, uh, I'm done, it's over, this is how we do things, this is how it's going to stay. Yeah. I mean, you can't say that. No, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, if we don't want to get stuck forever and, yeah, get extinct. <laughs> it's the same thing, like we say, you know, we need more female directors. We need more female actors. And when we need them, we need them playing from the age of young to the fucking old. We don't need to say, you know, a woman is only good as an actor until they're 35. That's it's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. It's the most ludicrous shit I've ever heard. Yeah. It doesn't make any because when you look at it, the women over in their third over 35, 40, they become even more interesting. Yeah. Because they, they become even more interesting, more beautiful, more sexy, more intelligent more they know that and their roots go deeper so you know this is a strong 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 uh, uh, uh being right yeah. so we need to explore, we need to bring those to the forefront more filmmakers are that are female uh, more filmmakers that are uh, 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 male more filmmakers that are plus gender you name it yeah yeah you know this this is this is why it's storytelling Mm -hmm. where we can always expand on our story mm -hmm. you know do not limit it when we limit ourselves we're really cheating ourselves it's not good is there anything you would like to you know explore as an 
actor or producer maybe you even think about directing yourself again i think you directed Yes, I directed. I've directed theater uh, plays, and I've directed yeah. also uh, uh, films, uh, short films. Yeah, so I, I direct sometimes, and I teach sometimes, um, and I love doing that. But my main thing, I want to be able to create my own content. I want to be able to um, eventually have a studio of my own. Yeah. And which is really the, the, the thing I'm working toward, and I think it's achieved, and I will achieve it soon. I want to be eight. My desire is also to work with respectful, kind, sensitive, and also crazy artists. It doesn't matter from which part of the world, you know. I want that. I'm not one to say I want to want to work with A-listers or well-known directors. I would love to work with well-known directors, but I also would love to work with an unknown jam, you know? Mm -hmm. so, wow, this, this, mm -hmm. this young lady, this young man, man, you know, wow. You know, people like Shoshana, Shoshana Stark. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when I met Shoshana, she was like 19, 18, young. Very but young. You, but you knew there was something there, right? Mm -hmm. And then to, the more she worked, and you're like, wow. And now the shit she's doing is like amazing stuff. Yeah. She's an incredible director. You know, and then you got the same thing with um, with other young directors like the the the, the, the Rupert and uh and, yeah. and Hurler and all and these guys Wagner, you know, those young directors from uh, Salzburg. And yeah. you know, you you and then you 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 just start working with these guys, you're like, wow, you know, you see it, there is something there, mm -hmm. you know, and you just see it. So all you got to do is nurture the seed and make sure it doesn't get rotten and make sure that the roots stay strong and we support them. And I tell you, in the next three, four, five years, these are the guys who will be saying, look at this, you know? Exactly, yeah. So I, so um, I, I, um, I would say we should explore our abilities to storytelling and our talent because human beings, we have untapped imagination. Mm -hmm. Our imagination hasn't even started. Mm -hmm. And we should limit ourselves and put this uh, stupid paradigms that do not that do not enhance our our storytelling abilities in, in our society. And I think this we should we should also be very supportive of each other in the sense of uh, storytelling, and we should be truthful with each other. If it's bullshit, it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Should we should be able to say that? Mm -hmm. um, and but also this is also to do with your taste, right? Yeah. Right, so it's got to be your, your it's your opinion, and say, okay, this is my opinion. I don't like it because of this and this and this. Mm -hmm. It's acceptable. Move yeah. on, right? And somebody will turn around and say, well, I like it because of that and that and that because of the same shit that you don't like. So, so you know, I would say, I hope, um, especially for where I live right now in Austria, I know there's a there's a there's a possibility. I hope to get a TV show here done, and we're looking into getting their finances for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it would have been nicer. It would have been so beautiful to get it with the money coming out of Austria, an Austrian investment. Mm -hmm. But as you probably know, it's it's not an easy process. Um, but you know, some people manage to do it, but some people just it just doesn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to do Vinaland. You've heard of it. And we yep. want to make sure that it's done here. And I am very adamant that it gets it gets done in in Austria, because a lot of people in, put so much work into, into getting it done. It I don't think it would be fair just to sell it to somebody and then they get it shot in Canada or some other place, and all the people that worked on it for almost nothing never get a chance to actually do get earn something or do yeah. something. And and with Vinland, it just seems Austria. It just seems perfect for it geographically, architecturally, story-wise, um, and the abilities, the talent is there, it's here. It just seems to be the right place for it. It's just a feeling, and it's a good feeling that it's, it should be something that we should do here yeah. in Austria. Yeah. If, you know, if we are afraid of failure, that's okay too. But I gotta, I gotta believe that there are, there are so many film and sto uh, show runners in Austria that have done successful shows mm -hmm. that it's doable. So, so yeah. they have failed for us and they have succeeded for us. So we can just have to pick up on that and ride on the back of their success and make it even more so that 
those that come after or that help us get further, get more, a little more success. And success is just a matter of saying having billions in the bank of millions. Success means see our story, imagine it, put it out. And then we see what we've imagined, get it done and eventually sit back and say, wow, it's actually better than we imagined. You know, yeah. that, that's, that's success, right? And then from that, it gives us the impetus to do more. It gives yeah. us the confidence to do more. It gives everybody the confidence to say, you know what? Yeah, we can do this. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, so Vinaland is definitely one of the things I'm pu we're pushing me and uh, uh, Jan Wallets, uh, um, Stefan Polazak, Ava Isaac, um, Christoph Dechai, you know, we all sticking, sticking together and trying to make sure that we get this project done here because it makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. Austria has beautiful locations, oh, yeah. beautiful castles that we could use for this show, for this, and beautiful costumes, uh, the beautifully, uh, the, uh, and, a, and a long history of storytelling, uh, filmmaking, yeah. um, you know, so, and a, and, a, and a plethora of talented uh, storytellers and mm -hmm. filmmakers. So yeah. I think if we can get the finances to get it done here, that would be beautiful. And it'd be another step to go forward. You know, to yeah. move forward. yeah, I mean, the pilot is incredibly successful. Yeah, the proof of concept is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. incredible. And, and everybody loves it. We got with that proof of concept, we have over 80 awards. And they're not just your simple wow. origin. Best picture, best this, best that, amazing. Yeah. And from really, really incredible uh, um, festivals. Mm -hmm. And we've had nothing but great reaction yeah. from all over. Yeah. Um, we, we haven't got, we haven't um, done much because it's just finances. We're yes. trying to get the finances in place, but you know, it's a, it's a process that started way back and now we're almost at the head of it. So mm -hmm. the tail end is, is over. We're almost getting to realize it and seeing it. So it's, it's been a, it's, it's a good journey. I mean, we're still in the process of uh, making sure that we have everything that we need. Yeah. Make sure that it's, it's done here. And hose cross that it works out very, very soon. It's, it's a great, really great one. And thank uh, you. I will, I, I, will, I will link the, the trailer down below if that is okay with yeah, you. Yeah, that's perfectly okay with me. That's, <laughs> yeah. that'd, be, that'd be great. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, sure. Appreciate absolutely. People and, 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 you know, we, we could be, we could be, the universe understand. It could be some, some great Austrian guy or lady sitting there going, you know what? Maybe I could invest in this. Why the fuck not? Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, I, mean, I always conclude this with uh, one question, uh, and that is for aspiring actors, storytellers, filmmakers, what are your three tips you would give them? Have a plan. A summary. Pardon? Oh, one, have a plan. Mm -hmm. Two, do not be afraid of failing. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And three, definitely, if you, it's, it's, if you keep at it and you practice, you will realize that the older and the longer you're in this game, the more you understand acting, the more you understand storytelling. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a muscle, use it, work on it. And, the, and I'll tell you, you will not be disappointed later on in life. So have a plan, know exactly what it is you wanna achieve or what you wanna achieve at what stages, keep, keep open. And always, I'm sure this is the fourth, but for me, this is the number one, be respectful. Have respect, be kind, be open, right? It doesn't mean to say be stupid, be gullible. No, it mm -hmm. just means within those tough situations, be kind, be respectful, be open and expand, you know, mm -hmm. always expand. Yes, and. Yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you. Very this was. That beautiful. was more than three, but hey. <laughs> no, but all of them are precious and all of them are true. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I really thank you so much for, for this. You shared so much wisdom. This is- Oh, you're very welcome. Come on, it's, it's, it's it, you, you're the best. I mean, really, I, I remember the short film I played in, uh, your short film, the first one you wrote. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I've known you a while and I, it's always been a pleasure knowing you and working with you. And I think what you do is amazing. Uh, you're a professor of uh, film and you, 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 you're a mother, wonderful mother. 
and a wonderful wife, but, you know, and you're very intelligent. You're very well, you're very talented as a director and producer. So I am the one who's thankful, you know, that you actually came to me and you said, David, I'm doing this movie. Would you please do it with me? It was for me, it was like I told you, of course, what the fuck? You don't gotta ask me this. <laughs> It's not going to be the last one anyway, no worries. <laughs> for sure, yeah, I'm sure we got a lot to do later on. Yeah. So so yeah. I'm thankful to you, for people like you, uh, that are expanding um, humanity's story. This is nice, I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you right. so, so much. So I will... I will put all the links to yeah to to Vinaland and also to your website so that people yeah. can find you can check you out make sure you do that. <laughs> yeah, you know they got me and you got you got my Instagram, you got my yes. uh, Facebook. Yeah. What else? I'm terrible with uh, uh, social media. Uh, uh, <laughs> social media. As much as I love it, but I'm I, I can't manage it. You know, for some reason. You're so much better than I am. I'm really terrible. <laughs> yeah, everybody's sort of saying, David. It's you're posting good stuff, but I just, you know, but I, I just go with what I feel. <laughs> so first of all, things have a meaning that you're posting. Plus, yes. you're always like on your toes. You're right. Away. I mean, you're so much faster very often when, when something comes like for no matter because thanks to you, our no mother is doing pretty well in in the festivals as well. Yep. <laughs> um, and you're much faster very often with the posting. I'm like, oh God, oh, what do I have to do now? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay, sit down. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just shooting it out. Ta -da. <laughs> yeah, because, because, you know, it's like, um, No Mother, as you know, is a very, very special project um, for me. And also it's very important that, you know, you, you I'm exactly producing it and I'm sort of gonna making sure that it goes to festivals and that um, that it's seen by as many people. And also it's important one, we had uh, you directing and Nora, she was producing. And then we also had uh, another lady also who was uh, doing uh, also producing, right? Uh, um, Marisa did the- um, Marisa did the editing, directing, right? The editing, yeah, then and we had Marco to for the uh, camera. That's right. And so we had like a big, nice, beautifully balanced yeah uh cast and True. talent behind the camera yeah so that Manon, was Manon Pichon Manon, yeah. camera assistant wonderful but yeah I, I'm sure we forget a lot of the story if you're watching it we we love you all <laughs> we do we do we love you and you did a great job so so my my so basically I'm thinking I wish everybody that I've worked with or I will ever work with in the future nothing but the best in all their endeavors Nothing but the best. So, best closing words one can say. Uh, so, thank uh, you. You so take much. care and all the best. Much love to you. To thank you. you. Take and care. Uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. We'll and I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you for spending your time with us. I will put all the links to David's website and his imdb.com page and whatever I can think of down below in the description box. Make sure you check it out. And I wish you a wonderful week. Stay healthy, stay creative and take care.